throughout our many journeys exploring Inscriptions ARG, we've bore witness to Satan's evil, power struggles that could destroy the world, and horrors well beyond our comprehension. But now it's time for a bit of a simpler story, the tale of a mage who was a bit too much for even the scribes to handle, the legend of Plasma Jimmy. Understanding the context behind the events of the story will take a bit of prior inscription knowledge, so if you aren't sure if you know enough, check the description of this video to see what you still need to know, as well as the videos that can explain it to you. For those of you that are still left, well, let's get into my interpretation of Daniel Mullen's final piece of ARG. Our story begins just before the events of Casey's Mod and the Hex, a time where the Devil and Irving still had the copy of Inscription under their control, working on its completion. The scribes and their domains had already been created, and now came time to create their minions. Fileshi, some antisocial companions as in tune with the forest as he was. For Grimoire, humble skeletons fitting her persona of death. For PO3, well, they were having a pretty hard time coming up with anyone who could walk around a stiff character. And for Magnificus, well, he was having the opposite problem. He wished to have all of his subjects put through torturous trials, pushing them to their mental and physical limit through pure pain. This was awfully useful for Irving as he oversaw AI creation for Magnificus's servants, as compatibility mattered little. In fact, the more they disliked the torture, the better. Irving created three NPCs for the Master Wizard. First was Gubert, who Magnificus promptly turned into a slimy little fellow, making his existence one of constant pain. But despite that, Gubert still did love his master. Next was James Cobb the Ruby Mage, who was the protagonist of our little side story, whose torture involved his body being morphed and transformed, although he didn't seem to mind it too much. Lastly came Pike, for whom Magnificus tortured by sticking her on a pike for eternity, as well as placing hot coals beneath her, ensuring that she would never grow used to the enduring pain. While Goober and Pike performed as Magnificus had hoped, both sufficiently degraded by their torture, the scribe quickly grew infuriated with his ruby mage, as James Cobb actually enjoyed his torture, fascinated by the ways his body was being mutilated. Furious that his subject wasn't being sufficiently tortured by his torture, Magnificus complained to Irving, demanding that he receive a replacement for the deranged mage. But NPCs are costly to make, especially conscient ones, so, Irving accepted on the condition that Magnificus find another use for the faulty masochist. Luckily for him, there was one other scribe who was having an equally tough time finding an NPC to fit his twisted personality, PO3. While the two scribes are known for their hatred towards each other, they managed to put aside their differences to make them mutually beneficial trade. PO3 had a new servant with the potential to become his strongest card ever, and Irving allowed Magnificus to receive a new NPC to replace James. This new servant would come to be known as the Lonely Wizard, thanks to Magnificus subjecting him to total sensory deprivation, to which he was adequately tortured by. Unfortunately for the mechanical scribe, there was still a slight problem. PO3 used a special particle scanner to copy the CPUs of his minions to create his cards, but James was a creation of flesh, unable to be scanned by PO3's device. From this problem came another equally shocking time where PO3 actually worked together with another scribe who he otherwise despised, this time requesting the help of one of Leshy's minions, the mycologist. Although, to be fair, we don't really know how much control Leshy has over this raving fellow. But regardless, PO3 requested their help, to which the mycologist was eager to accept. Another test subject was always welcome. The only question was whether or not the test subject themselves would be as happy with being torn to shreds and then reanimated. Of course, their test subject was no ordinary NPC, and seeing how James actually enjoyed Magnificus's trials of having his body morph to the point of being unrecognizable, he sure as hell was excited to go through with the mycologist's experiments. 
Undergoing such a massive task, it took the mycologist multiple attempts to turn James into a mechanical being. It should also be mentioned that, if he wasn't before, James was balls off the wall insane at this point, with even the mycologist, someone who would be the pride of any psych ward, admitting that the mage had become certifiably unhinged after becoming more than 75% mechanical. Bringing him much past that point was impossible for the mycologist, who handed the mentally mad mage back to PO3. Although, with some organic matter still left, PO3 still couldn't scan him into a card. As one final attempt to turn this NPC into his most overpowered card, PO3 shoved the lunatic through his smelter and switched out James's head for a gun. This process was extremely reckless, even for an NPC like James to go through, and once the dust had settled, PO3 wasn't even sure if there was any other mage left. Was he dead, or had he just lost his soul? With no head, he showed no emotion, his muzzle staring off into the distance, showing no sign of consciousness. PO3 asked if he remembered his name, and the turret moved shooting onto the floor the engravings that spelt out the name he would claim with this new version of himself. Thus, Plasma Jimmy was born. Before we end off the video, I'd like to thank everyone in the Daniel Mullins community for working so diligently at finding every little secret his games have to offer. Without them, these videos wouldn't be possible. Thanks for watching.